Hello. Jade Serpent guide you. One day, a father grew tired of his young cub's misbehavior. You act just like a hosen, the father scolded. Still, his son misbehaved. To teach him a lesson, the father dragged the cub out to the forest to watch how the hosen live. Do you see what the hosen are like, he asked? Do you want to live like that? The Hosen are quite lively indeed. A short-lived race. Few Hosen survive past their 20th birthday. Their leaders are all 14 or 15. How mature were you at 14 years old? <laughs> Meditate on that. Afterward, the father asked his cub what he had learned. I learned that we work and toil on our little farm, but that the Hosen have the whole world as their garden, the cub said. I learned that we squint by the light of a single candle, but that the Hosen enjoy the light of the stars. I learned that I go to school every day, but that the Hosen learn by doing. And the cub concluded, I should very much like to live like a hosen. <laughs> Who then was the wiser, the father or the cub? That, my friend, is for you to decide. Pandaria welcomes you. Every good story needs a hero. Let us talk about the nature of power. In my hands, I hold a sword. I ask you, who wields the power? I do, for I wield the sword. Many thousands of years ago, the Mogu held all the power. They ruled this land with fists of iron. But as their empire grew, they needed a way to police it. They used the powers of the veil and their own flesh-warping magics to twist and shape a race of ferocious lizards into a living weapon. They created an army. An army of Sorok. Bloodthirsty savages created to enforce the will of the Emperor. Ah. But there is a problem with creating a living weapon. Do you see? Who now wields the power? The heartless Sorok, even with their tiny lizard brains, soon realized the truth of their position. They killed the enemies of the Mogu. Then they killed the subjects of the Mogu. Soon. They started killing the Mogu themselves. The Mogu Emperor then ordered all of the Sorok to be purged. He tried to wipe out their entire race to no avail. They still plague Andaria to this day. So you see, power is easily taken, but should not be lightly given. I seem to have lost my sword. How does today find you? Farewell. How does today find you? Tread lightly. 
Great events often have humble beginnings. Consider a quiet pond. Still, the water is like a sheet of glass. Until I throw a stone. Such a small thing. But soon, ripples engulf the whole of the lake. The Jinyu also have humble origins. Once primitive creatures, they were fortunate enough to live near the enchanted pools within the Vale. The magic of the pools expanded their minds and grew their bodies until they became one of the great ancient cultures of Pandaria. The wisest of the Jinyu are very wise indeed. They can speak to the rivers, the way you and I would consult our elders. In the whispering waters, they can hear the future. The Jinyu and their water speakers stand at the very heart of the greatest events in Pandaria's history. Their visions built empires, freed slaves, and warned our last emperor of the Sundering that shattered Azeroth 10,000 years ago. Think about it. The smallest voice can change the world. Consider that, friend, the next time you decide to start throwing stones. Farewell. What do you fear most in this world? Have you conquered your fear? Or has your fear conquered you? In the ancient days before the sundering of the world, the Mogul emperors ruled over Pandaria. My people were made slaves, and they were afraid. The Mogul were masters of pain and torture, of dark magics and brutal weapons. No Pandaren, Hosen, or Jinyu could resist the power they held. And my people were afraid. It was the Mogu who built the Serpent Spine. The most unlucky of slaves were sent to aid in its construction and defense, to be fodder for the Mantid. And my people were afraid. As the Empire grew, the Mogu began to experiment with the secrets of the Vale. They crafted terrible weapons of living flesh and stone. And my people were afraid. In their hubris, the Mogu never foresaw that their downfall lay in wait. Not among their enemies, but among the oppressed. The day that one slave stood and was no longer afraid. Pandaria welcomes you. Every good story needs a hero. What is the source of your power? Think carefully before you answer. Many adventurers point to their weapons or their equipment or to tomes of arcane might. Long ago, when my people were slaves of the Mogu Empire, we were forbidden from carrying any weapon at all. We were not fighters, and no one believed we could fight the Mogu with our magic and steel until Kang, the Fist of First Dawn, opened our eyes. One day, the beloved monk issued a challenge to his fellow slaves. Hit me, he called out. Surprised, the beleaguered Pandaren slaves tried to strike Kang. One by one, they failed, 
For he intercepted their blows like a dancer, and sidestepped their attacks like a reed in the wind. Our backs are hardened by the whips of the Mogul, he told them. Our arms are powerful from building their fortresses. Our minds are sharp from working Warning. alongside our enemy. You think the Mogu are stronger? I say we are their strength. The farmers, the bricklayers, the shepherds, the smiths, they all bowed before Kang. Teach us, they said. Teach us to fight. And when they rose, they Warning. rose as warriors. Your voice, your hands. These are the tools of true heroes. Use them well, and you can change the world. Greetings. Eyes open. Always be learning. Oh, my student. You wish to study the Mantid? Ah. Be warned, the Pandaran frontier is littered with the graves of former pupils. The Mantid are harsh teachers. Every generation, the Mantid swarm the Serpent's Spine Wall in great numbers. They murder many Pandaran, so we kill many times their number in return. Yet each generation, they attack once more. Why do they do this? We Pandaran do not know. Our ancient writings indicate that the Mantid have always been here. They predate even the Mogu. Where did they come from? We Pandaran do not know. Perhaps if you were to befriend the Mantid and earn a reputation among them, they would teach you their secrets. But I warn you, Nobody has ever befriended the Mantid. Here is what the Pandaran do know. By massacring our people, by slaughtering tens of thousands of Pandaran, generation after generation, they have taught us the value of life. A precious but fleeting gift, easily snuffed out in an instant. This is what the Mantid have taught us. Hello. Jade Serpent guide you. Fire. It is the most magical of elements. It warms us. It cooks our food. It is the hearth fire that makes a house a home. In the right hands, fire can shape iron into sword. Fire is the instrument of change. Long ago, a group of sturdy nomad hunters wandered the world. By a stroke of fate, they were here in Pandaria when the Sundering split apart the continents of Azeroth. The wanderers found themselves trapped in the town Long Steps, a harsh and dangerous land. Those noble hunters found a way to survive on their own. Fire was the key. They drew up oil from the ground. They used it to heat their homes, cook their food, and burn their enemies. They grew strong. From the Warning. flames of fate, the young Gaul were born. They survived beyond the wall, for they refused to submit to any law but their own. Has fate been cruel to the young Gaul? You may as well ask if fire is good or bad. Fate is like fire. It can Warning. shape us, or it can destroy us. All that matters is what you do with it. Warning. Warning. Greetings. Every good story needs. Ah, you wish to learn of our last and greatest emperor, Shao Hao. 
Oh, my friend. I do not have the time here to recount all of his adventures. But his actions 10,000 years ago resonate to this very day. We know that he purged his doubts in the Jade Forest. That he cleansed himself of despair in the Krasarang Wilds. That he overcame his fear in the town Long Steps. And that he defeated anger, hatred, and violence high in the mountains of Kunlai. This is known. And there are temples to mark these most sacred of places. But I want you to imagine standing in this very valley on the day he returned Warning. from his journey. Imagine being here when the gates opened for him. By then, our Emperor was a creature of pure light. No doubts, no fears, no hatred. It is said that all the trees in the Vale blossomed as he entered, and continue to blossom to this day. Warning. Would that we could all live like our most sacred emperor, that we could put aside all our burdens and exist in harmony with the cosmos. That, I believe, was his message to us, before he became one with the land and hid Pandaria away from the terror of the Sundering. Thank you, dear Emperor. Pandaria welcomes you, Jade Serpent Guide. When the Sundering ripped apart the continents of Azeroth, we Pandaren thought that the rest of the world had been utterly destroyed. But as the centuries passed, one young explorer decided to see what was out there. His name was Liu Liang, and he set out to discover the world on the back of a turtle. We celebrate his bravery with statue and song, but uh, if you were actually there on the beach that very day, well, I'm sure he looked quite silly indeed. Oh, how the Pandaren laughed at him. But Liu Lang was more clever than anyone thought. Sea turtles always return to the beach where they were born. And so, despite the mists that envelop our land, he always had a way home. Every few years, he returned with tales of mysterious cities in the sand, nomadic people living on endless grassy plains, a great empire under the ice, and a magical kingdom gilded in gold. Each time he returned, more and more Pandaren answered Liu Lang's call and joined him on his growing turtle. They were the bravest among us, the explorers, the adventurers. And that is the lesson of Liu Long, my friend. Everyone always laughs at the explorer. They always laugh until he returns. Tread lightly. Eyes open. Always be learning. The answers are here. I can feel it. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Slow down. Goodbye. My goods are crafted with great care.
I hope to see you again soon.